Murphy's gonna pass it in, in towards McGrath. McGrath out to Quinn. Back out to Murphy. Great shot by McGrath. Absolutely, and if St. Joe's Community College continue to sit in a 2-1-2 zone like that, they'll be in trouble if, if Bannon continues to hit the shots from outside. There we go, Duffy drives towards the basket. She's just dispossessed there. And they just put their foot out of the play there. I think it's Nicola Quinn, Nicole Quinn. Hannah Burke to inbound here for St. Joe's. Great work inside there, receiving that ball under pressure by number six, Alicia Duffy. The Bandon have settled in well, Jimmy. Yeah, they have. They're, they're, they have to stay on top in the opening three or four minutes here. St. Joe's just committing simple mistakes that are causing turnovers, unforced turnovers, and at the minute, the Clarks and Tibbetts from Bandon are capitalizing on them. And McGrath brings the ball up the floor. Passed inside to, to Wall. And gets fouled. Yeah, she got lucky there when you try to pass the ball into the trees like that, it can be difficult. Cole Quinn, going to get the ball in the way. Alison Duffy stepped out of bounds. It'll be a St. Joseph's Community College ball. We have a bit of Italian 90 in the stands here, JP. <laughs> We won't say how old we were during Italian 90, Jimmy. <laughs> People mightn't believe us. <laughs> the ball will remain St. Joe's possession here. Klaus and Tibbert are matching up in a, in a man's zone there. This Crean passes it back to uh, Burke. She ran down a rabbit hole there to the out of bounds and back in the, in the hands of Klaus and Tibbert. Neve McGraw on the ball, setting it up, puts it on the wing. Inside the Kate Wall there, did a good pass. It seems to be the option McGraw uh, pretty much always goes for down the right-hand channel um, early on for, 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 for Bandon, but it's worked out for them. Absolutely. As timeout called, score is 5-0 in favour of Bandon. Checking back from that timeout here, we have Neve McGrath on the free throw line. Bit long on the first, doesn't get it to fall. Overall, in the first <coughs> three and a half minutes, there, JP, who do you think is the happier team wise, regardless of score there? Oh, I think Mark Scannell's got to be, be the happier man this afternoon so far, anyway. As the second free throw goes there for O'Flynn. I think they might have the crowd behind them as well, Jimmy. Absolutely. <laughs> Duffy puts it on the floor. Out to Doherty. She's well shepherd in the corner there. Then she get the ball as she does. Back inside, picked off. Great pressure in there from Bandon. 
To not let them get any shots out. No, there's no easy options here, is it? McCreen has the ball here. She's looking for options. She can't find one. She's got one in, uh, in Duffy. Shot clock violation there. Good defense. This will be another turnover for St. Joseph's. McGraw has the ball again. St. Joseph's sitting in a 2 1 2 defense there. Course and Bannon to move the ball around the outside. Nice shot there by Murphy. Just misses out. McGraw gets it. Misses out again. She gets her own rebound. And she gets the points. McGrath is definitely the most active player on the floor currently between the two teams here. As Doherty slices inside. Nice move. Green almost had the rebound there. Fights behind the ball. Along with Murphy, it'll be a jump ball in favour of Bandon. McGrown the ball now for Bandon bringing on the floor as they set up. Hold in a bit of a tussle there, but Jump ball of favourite St. Joe's as they look to make a change here, bringing in Elaine O'Donnell. Her first action of the game. Murphy brings the ball up for St. Joe's. Some great work there. Just couldn't finish it off with the shot, unfortunately. That's a abandoned ball there. Just knocked out of play by uh, O'Leary. Patient build up here by Bannon, picked off inside though. Good rebound in there by Stack. Oh no, sorry, apologies, Green. And that's probably the first time that St. Joe's have got the ball inside like that there, isolating Sarah Burke with a nice post move. She managed to draw the contact and go the line of shoot too. They're probably more important than a normal free throw. You know, you want to get on the board. Absolutely, just, just to get the, the scoreboard ticking over there. Not just personally, but also from a team point of view, just to get everyone settled a little bit. First one is a, a little off target. Sarah Burke is short of the second, unfortunately. Yeah, And had the ball name. McGraw passes it out to Doherty. McGraw steady the ship, thought about a tree. Pass inside. Good rebound by Burke and off to the race to St. Joe's all the way to the basket. Bit strong, doesn't get it to go. That was unlucky by Hannah Burke. Still looking for their first elusive basket, JP. Yeah. Kate Wall has a shot. Unlucky, unlucky. Very rebounding in there, but just just couldn't get the basket. Stardy with the ball, she drives for the basket. Come on, unlucky, unlucky. She gets her own rebound though. Yeah, nice move by Dahri. She's a nice player to watch out there. Yeah. She controls her body well going to the basket. As they'll go to the line to shoot two and Bandon are in foul trouble after this. If, if St. Joe's play smart, it could be a long two minutes for them. Yeah, in the last few minutes they've really been driving to the basket a little bit more. It's paying dividends for them. They're getting to the free throw line. Absolutely, as Ella Stack checks into the game for number eight, Kate Wall, who perhaps is in a bit of foul trouble, two fouls in the first quarter. First one finally goes for St. Joe's Charleston. Sarah Burke is off on the on the, the score sheet. Second free throw there. She's one for three from free throws today. Yeah. 
McGrown the ball here, setting up for, for Bandon. Spreads it wide in the wing, thought about a shot, pulls up for three. That's a shot. Oh, unlucky. Oh, great steal in there from McGrath to keep the pressure on. There's Doherty again, ever active on defense. Sitting in a deep zone since Joe's still in 2 1 2 here. Forcing Bandit to tip, put the ball outside or in the low pocket like that as it rebounds for Doherty again. Loses control, out of bounds, it'll be Bandon ball yet again. A lot of unforced errors here from St. Joseph's Community College, JP. I uh, just see Duffy's coming in there for, for O'Donnell. Yeah, they definitely need to, to keep the ball in hand a little bit better. McGrath thinks about the shot, she decides to drive for the basket. Kind of got caught between a pass and a shot there, as can happen. When you leave the ground like that, it's very difficult to adjust. Doherty with the ball for St. Joe's. Passes it inside to Duffy. Fighting for the ball, it'll remain a St. Joe's ball. Interesting to see Mark Scannell has his team play a man defense. It's something you don't see a whole lot in school level, but it's fantastic to see because it improves the player all around. That's the Joe's turn over the ball again. So Flynn, just unlucky. Perhaps got away with a little travel as well there, but <laughs> it's uh, that's a move in New York, so it's okay. 54 seconds left here. Score is 8-1 to one in favour of Colossia Turbridge Bandon. I think St. Joe's has settled in in the last few minutes, though. I don't think uh, they're not looking as much as deers in the headlights as they were in the early stages of the quarter. So uh, I think we're in for a good game. Absolutely. And they're a team that was in a fine area this year, so I'd expect them to come back out in the second quarter and be ready to go again. As McGrath picks up the foul there, she'll shoot two. I'd say Scano would like to see uh, McGrath shooting a little bit more in the game. She, she seems to be a good player. Yeah, she's kind of directing operations out there. She's short in the first free throw, though. Doesn't get it to go. That's the second one, though. So there's 36 seconds left in the first quarter. It's nine points to, to Bandon, one point to St. Joe's. Doherty with the ball. She drives again towards the basket. That's nice. That's very there nice. Go, absolutely. Very high pick set before that to free her up, though, as she got to the basket. So With only six points differential in the first quarter, considering how perhaps poor the shooting was. St. Joe's won't be too, two days by it. 11 seconds left, back in the hands of Doherty. High screen again, set her free, lose control. McGrath's the ball, only two seconds left. Goes for it. Oh, unfortunate. So that's the end of the first quarter. It's nine points to Vanden, three points to St. Joe's.
And checking back in here the second quarter between Klaus and the Tirvers, Bandon and St. Joe's Community College of Chasson here. 9 3 in favour of Bandon as that girl Doherty makes away the basket, doesn't get it a fall. Great rebound by Burke. Add to Crean. Gonya Flynn on the, on the rebound there, puts it up, doesn't get it to go. Burke. Bandon back in the control, hands of McGrath again. And you have to say, St. Joe's are getting the looks, JP. They're just not getting them to fall. Yeah, exactly. McGraw with the miss there. She just doesn't get the get the roll. Ball's back to Doherty for St. Joe's. She's looking for options. Well, shepherded by McGraw there, who is equally adept on defense as she's in offense. As Sarah Burke takes the bump and the ball goes out of bounds with no foul called. St. Joe's player is not getting much room out there. It's man-to-man -man defense that Scanlon's putting out is, re is really causing some yeah, trouble. Yeah, players are clever. They're, they're denying the passes, and when they do receive the pass, they're stepping off and playing good defense. So, As the ball is back in the hands of McGraw with the, the abandoned crowd getting behind him here. Nice pass inside. Just uh, Quinn. Quinn gets it to drop down with it. Pull up shot there. Doherty on the ball now. Looking for Burke inside. She cuts across. Burke on the ball, puts in the floor, takes the contact. Pushes off though a bit aggressively. Call for the offensive foul. It'll be abandoned ball. I'm presuming Pikachu is, is for abandoning the crowd here as well as his. It looks like the Easter Bunny or maybe a. <laughs> A faster version of a white rabbit, I'm not too sure, JP. <laughs> well, it's very seasonal if it is the Easter Bunny. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> he needs some chocolate by the looks of him, though. Yeah. As it remains an abandoned ball here with Kiro Sullivan to pass the ball in. Checking back into the game is Kate Wall. Checking out is Quinn. Oh, sorry, oh, Flynn rather checked out there. McGrath on the ball, nice skill, just puts it, oh, bank shot. And while it's still early on, JP, I feel that St. Joe's will have to address McGrath there. She's doing a bit, good bit of damage now as the game wears on. Yeah, and everything goes through her, so uh, definitely, if you can stop her, I think you're, you're definitely stopping a lot of good stuff. As Green drops the, the long two there. 13-5 in favour of Bandon. Nice move to the basket, but Sullivan doesn't get it to go. Out in front is Crean again. Nice Euro step to the basket, drops short. Rebound by Doherty. She has numbers. Nice pass out there to Crean. Crean gets the rebound. Good industrious play by Crean there. She was unlucky with the first shot attempt, chased down her own rebound. Got fouled in the next. She shoot two here. Looks like O'Flynn is coming in the game. She's coming in for Quinn. And that's the one thing I find as a coach, JP. When you're playing man defense, your players have to be very disciplined because you can pick up fouls quite easily. In the first quarter there, Bandon made a great job of playing man defense, but we're still in the foul trouble with two minutes to go. So. I think St. Joe's could possibly exploit that if they were to go at them a little bit more. Crean gets one from two from the free throw line. Brings the deficit to seven. McGraw with the ball here for, for Bandon. Great rebound by O'Sullivan inside. Passes out to O'Flynn. O'Flynn's looking for options. She passes it to Stack. She loses it. McGraw goes for the long three. Doherty again. Great work by Doherty there, going at the, the band in defense there as they pick up their second team foul of the game, of the quarter rather. If you're a Doherty's coach now, you'd be telling her to keep keep it up, wouldn't you? Yeah, keep, keep going at them. Keep, keep, keep trying to find out any weaknesses they might have as a player on, on man defense there. Um, 
they would also have to look start putting some points on the board because while it's fine drawn fouls you could capitalise on that and at the minute they're one from five from the free throw line or two from five rather and Alison Murphy's just come in the game for Akira Sullivan Crean has a go she just misses great oh. defence by McGrath they're blocking Burke as she charges down the floor sees the players ahead it remains banned on ball Alison Murphy to check it in here Time, time, called. time out called by Mars Scanley wants to talk about it. 13-6 in favour of Bandon. Welcome back. There's uh, four minutes, 20 seconds left in the second quarter. The score is uh, 13 points to Bandon, uh, six points to St. Joe's. Doherty has the ball here for St. Joe's. Looking for options. Interesting to see there that uh well, Flynn picks her up down the floor, but once she gets down, McGrath takes over on defense mm. on guard and Doherty there. So maybe that's a, a tactic by Scanlon to limit her influence, perhaps. Nice move to oh. the basket by Flynn there. Doesn't get it to come off, but will remain banned on ball. See Hannah Burke coming into the game here. Uh, she's replacing it. Elena O'Don O'Donnell. A Flynn to McGrath. Thought about the shot, puts on the floor outside the wall. Puts it up on the hurry. Doesn't get it, but good rebound inside there. By Duffy as she gets possession, but the possession arrow stays in favor of Bandon. Murphy has the ball, she gets it to Wall. She has a second go at it. Great pass that time from Duffy, just uh, Murphy rather. Didn't get it to come off though, the Doherty is looking to go at McGrath here, Tuss turns it inside out. Bork on the ball, back to Doherty. Kirk. Took the ball for a bit of a walk there unfortunately. At number nine, Hannah Burke, so it'll be back in the, the hands of Murphy, who let McGrath bring it down the floor. 3-12 left, 13-6 in favour of Bandon here. Is a nice pass inside to Wall, doesn't go. Doherty with the ball for St. Joseph's. Gives it to Burke. Passes inside to Hannah Burke. Yeah, I took the contact there. A ref could generally give a call either way, but McGrath was played on his defense there. She didn't drop the hand, so she sets it up for Bandon here. A ball on the wing, puts him the floor. Top of the key. Murphy pulls up for the shot, drops short. Great rebound inside, but turned over again, unfortunately. Murphy gives it to McGrath. 
McGraw has the shot, the long two. Quinn takes it up, drives to the basket. Unfortunately, misses out there. With Rebound by Quinn here, back inside the wall. She had a pocket pick by Doherty, who <laughs> managed to hold on to the ball, be a jump ball by the looks of it here. It will remain in favour of St. Joe's. And small things like that, JP, open layups like that, you really got to capitalise on them to give yourself any chance of, of, of being in a game like this. Yeah, particularly when it's, it's, it's going to be a low-scoring game here. You can tell from the, from the get-go, so every point counts, you know. Good hustle there by Burke again, but it'll remain Bandon ball here. 2 2 left in the second quarter, 13-6 in favour of Bandon. Murphy's long on the shot, but as can often happen, the eyes get big and you try to steal the ball back too quick and commit a foul. So it's one minute, 54 seconds left on the clock. It's 13 points to Bandon, six points to St. Joseph's. Sinead Dart Finn checks back in here. For number 12, Emma Crowley. Doherty on the ball. Good movement inside from St. Joe's here as Duffy takes the shot. Comes off wall and remain here on the offensive end for St. Joe's Community College. Burke tries to find Crean, but is unlucky. She's stolen by McGrath. Good steal in there by Duffy. Ball ahead, Long Crean pass. controls it well, but Back in the hands of the band and player. So Quinn brings it up the floor. She drives very well. Oh, unfortunately there, she just, just misses out. Hannah Burke hits, hits the deck. There we have a period of, of crazy basketball here where it's <laughs> turnover, turnover. Uh, my scan won't want to see that too much more of that. So Looks like he's he calling a timeout Calls out a timeout on cue there, absolutely. <laughs> Score is 13-6 in favour of Bandon, with 1.17 left in the second. And we're back here at 116 JP left here. Going into half time, I know probably Bandon be the happier team, but it's not out of sight yet for St. Joe's. Yeah, no, it's definitely not a lost cause anyway. Uh, they have a lot, lot of cause to be, to be positive. If they could get a couple of more points on the board in this last minute, it could make all the difference. Doherty takes the ball down here as we tick under one minute left in the second quarter. Good pass inside to Crean down low, doesn't get it to fall. Rebound back in the hands of McGrath. Murphy's looking for it. Goes to Wall. Just doesn't get the bucket. Yeah, it was a great pass inside there. She is perhaps a little longer than three seconds in the key as the ball is dribbled out of bounds by Burke here. 34 seconds left here. Murphy to McGrath, she'll take her time going down, get one good offense perhaps off this. Everything seems to run through McGrath on the team here for Abandon as 
foot entanglement there and Burke picks up the foul. Murphy will take it in from the side. Be no rush now. If they can just get off one more shot before the end of the half, they'll be happy. Out to McGrath, she goes first. Very lucky. Rebound in there by um, by Duffy. Doherty has the ball. She passes it to Crean. Crean has a shot. Come pass to Duffy. 4.1 left here. Timeout called here by St. Joe's. They want to run a set play, perhaps try and get a basket off this before half time as they trail 13 to 6. Four seconds left here in the second quarter. Burke to inbound the ball. I'd imagine they go look for Doherty on this. Or Crean perhaps for the shot. Crean. Oh, well done. Well done. Good shot as she puts a, a little bit of gloss to this first half. As they trail 13 to 8. St. Joe's behind. Gloss to Chibri Bandon.
Welcome back for the second half of this under 19 C Girls Schools League final between uh, Colossian of Torvith and St. Joseph's Community College, uh, County Mayo. The score is 13 points to eight to, to Bandham. Uh, it's been a great game so far, Jimmy. Uh, low scoring, but uh, some good tactics being, being instilled by both teams. Yeah, low scoring game there, and both teams guilty of some easy misses, but at the same time, some excellent defense being played there. Some extra individual performance so far as we have Neve McGrath on eight points there from the first half along with Sinead Darter Finn on three and Nicole Quinn on two. And on the other side of the floor we have Kelly Crean on five points for St. Joseph's. Doherty Wells Shepherd there on defense there as the ball goes out over bounds. McGrath brings it down all the time in the world to put a shot up off the glass, doesn't get it to go. Great work by Wall there. She passes it out to Flynn. And Flynn's unlucky with the shot. Good rebounding in there by Duffy. Green just misjudges the pass there. It's a abandoned ball. Yeah, she was probably thinking a bit faster than Burke there at that stage. There was a good pass. But it uh, didn't come off unfortunately as McGrath sets it up. St. Joe's still sitting in that 2 1 2 zone there, staying at home, drawn. Bandon on to the shoot shots. Doherty with the rebound. Burke with the ball. Passes it out to Burke again. As Wall looks to pick up the foul there. And the defensive end for Bandon. She feels a little bit hard done by there. End line ball for St. Joe's. Anna Burke has got the ball in hand. She's looking for options. She gives it to Duffy. Duffy is short in the shot. McGraw will bring it down the floor here for Bandon. Bandon with that cushion of a lead there, able to take the time on offense there, not rushing at him, whereas great work inside there by Burke to fight for that ball. Foul called that time on Sinead Arthur Flynn there as Doherty brings it on the floor again. So it looks like uh, Bandon have continued on with their man-to-man -man defense here. Yeah, they're matching up quite well there and forcing, forcing St. Joe's to take uh, contested shots there. And the turnovers like that certainly aren't helping their case right now as Bandon regain possession, McGrath on the ball. And perhaps looking at the game, I feel that St. Joe's could probably put a bit more pressure on, say, the guards from Bandon as they're allowed a lot of time on the ball up there, JP. Got a good press in there, really, really yeah. making rush. As Wall pops in the two there to push the lead 15 to 8 here. 5.48 left in the third quarter. Great work inside by Duffy there. Rebound by Burke. She draws the foul from number 10, O'Flynn, the Dart O'Flynn again. She goes Burke. around to shoot two. I think Burke is one from three from the future line so far this game, so she'll be looking to improve on that, hopefully. I took the words out of my mouth there, Jimmy. I was just about to say she needs to land her free throw. She's been getting fouled a bit today, so. First one is perfect. As a player myself, JP, I missed countless amounts of free throws too. <laughs> uh, it's one of those things. It can be a monkey on your back sometimes, or sometimes it can be the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> Second one's a bit short. Rebound by Dartha Flynn. McGrath pushing the ball on the floor. She has options ahead of her. Looks inside, a bit strong on the pass. Well recovered by Wall. Pass wasn't great there to, um, to Burke. Doherty on the ball here, shepherded again by Quinn. On defense to Bork, back to Doherty, picked off by, by Quinn. Doherty fought for it, but was out of bounds when she retrieved it. Bandon will set up another offense here. Green takes the ball for, for St. Joe's, he drives down the floor, down the wing. Gets it inside to Burke. 
They just can't seem to have that lucky bounce today, JP. Great move by Burke inside there, took the contact, put up a DC shot there, just unfortunately rimmed out. She'll have a second go at it here, though. She gets it a fall. Right, that's, that's what St. Joseph needs there to be relentless and keep going to the basket. McGraw up top there. Looks for the screen from Murphy. Thought about a shot, puts on the floor. Great work inside by Wall. Chase down a rebound. Doherty fights for it. It will remain. St. Joseph's ball here. That was a missed shot for Bandon, but it was a good offense all the same, JP. Good ball movement there, the right options taken. Exactly, yeah. And Doherty has the ball now for St. Joseph's. She gets it inside to Burke. <laughs> Burke is second low post move there on the left hand side to the basket that's her spot St. Joe's are right back in this game here now two point game 15 points to 13 Quinn to McGrath thought about a shot puts it on the floor looks inside doesn't get it to go great rebound inside by Wall there Quinn puts it up doesn't get it to go rebound Doherty And Doherty has options here. I think St. Joe's keep need to go into Burke here. Get her on the ball. She's working hard down there. Shot she's clock. definitely come out in this second half fighting Burke. You know, she's got to put it up here. The shot clock will go off. It'll be a violation as Doherty looks for space. They run out of time, unfortunately. It'll be Bandon ball. Good defense by Bandon there. Quinn to McGrath. Out to Quinn. Quinn has a shot. Bit of a tussle in there between Crean and Wall. St. Joe's, we got the, got the ball. Possession, has to say, Wall rebounded excellently well for, for Bannon there. She's every offensive board, she's getting a hand on it. Doherty has the ball. Drives oh, for the basket, and she gets it. All the way to the basket, Doherty levels the game here with three minutes to go in the third quarter. And St. Joseph's Community College are right back in this. That's a long three attempt there from McGrath. Max Scanlon wants to chat over this. He takes a timeout. As we're all square here at 15 apiece, 2.48 left in the third. Two minutes, 45 seconds left on the, in the third quarter. It's 15 points apiece. Uh, we've got ourselves a game, Jimmy. Absolutely, 15 square here, and St. Joe's have taken back the pace of this game, which for, for the most part, Bandon was in control of. McGrath to Murphy. Talk about a shot, puts on the floor. Travel called, correct call. She did move her feet first. I tell you, Jimmy, I was at the Aviva for the rugby game on the weekend and it was quieter at the Aviva than it is in here. I bet you didn't have Pikachu there either. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Outside, Cream, the long two, doesn't get it to go. There's that girl, Burke again, working in Dusty and it draws the foul. And she will go to the line to shoot too. And with two minutes left, similar to this, the first quarter, we have Bandon in foul trouble for the remainder of this quarter. 
And Joes could take the lead here for the first time in the game. First shot doesn't drop, unfortunately. A bit long off the rim. Sarah Burke misses the second one. And Murphy takes the ball away for Bandon, looking for the fast break. She's got, she's got Wool for support. Passes out to McGrath. McGrath gets the two. Nice move by McGrath. Nice decision by Wall not to force the shot there. Look for the better option as Dahard is on the ball here. They look for Burke in the low block. Ball up top, almost a turnover here. Cream steps in to save it. Pulls up the long three. Burke's under the basket though to get the rebound. Good offensive board by Burke there, but the call for the travel is checking into the game is Elaine O'Leary. As Kate Wall takes a break. Kate Wall's on eight fouls now as well, so it's probably what, what Mark has in mind. That's a good impact there by uh, O'Leary. That's it on the floor, maybe five or six seconds and gets a bucket. So good job from O'Leary as Adahardy is working hard the other end here trying to get a score back for St. Joseph's. Under pressure, she steps out of bounds. It'll be band and ball. Timeout call by St. Joe's Community College of Charleston with 107 left. As they trail band by four points, 19 to 15. Now we're back into the third quarter here. It's a four-point game with one minute to go. Uh, McGraw has the ball. Been well marshaled up top by Doherty as you look for the pass inside. It's not there. Cream picks it off, but unfortunately he's off balance. Call for the travel. Cream will have the ball for Bandon. Nice little pass inside to McGrath. Oh. It's one for the highlight reel. Nice move by McGrath. Something I might try the next time on the floor, perhaps. <laughs> Green on the ball, pulls up for three. Almost there, rebound by Murphy. He breaks the pace down the floor. Reaching foul called by Doherty. Bandon have recovered well from uh, the fight back from Joes, in fairness to them. Yeah, it was, uh, and plus a clever time out there by Mark Scanlon there. The coach of his pedigree, he knows when to call in the, the team to get him settled again. McGrath puts on the floor, pulls up at the elbow, doesn't shoot it. Quinn back to McGrath for three. He's a player down though. Looks like it's Hannah Burke. Took a bit of a tumble, all right. Hopefully she's okay. She's getting up kind of gingerously there. She wants to continue, but once the coach steps on the floor, JP, they have to, the player has to leave the floor. As Ella O'Donnell checks back in in her place. 20 seconds left. 21-15 in favor of Bandon. Buoyed by a very loud crowd with behind him. <laughs> Go 
I guess it's Quinn. It's intercepted, though. Doherty takes the bump. Gets the basket. Will shoot the bonus. We're not out of the... This game is far from over yet, JP. <laughs> she gets this now. Reduce the gap to three. Shot is short, unfortunately. Rebound by O'Flynn as they push down the floor and McGraw on the ball. Five seconds left, four. Does she see the clock? She's not aware of it. Good defense by St. Joe's. The shot goes up too late. Checked by Burke as we end the third quarter here. 21 17 in favor of Bandon. So oh, the fourth quarter, four point game, uh, close in the Turbig, 21 points, St. Joseph's Mayo, 17 points. I think it's gonna be a tense uh, last eight minutes. Yeah, absolutely, Jeffy. It'll be, these will be an important two or three minutes here. And if the game is still tight going down the stretch in the last two or three, anybody could take it, but the next two or three minutes for either team are vital here to try and establish a, a bit of dominance as Duffy puts the shot up and gets the two to fall. St. Joseph's coach would be very happy with that. Close the gap in as soon as they could in the fourth quarter. McGrath for three. Rebound by Doherty. St. Joe's really pushing the tempo, JP, looking to take the, the pace of the game away from Bandon, get down, make them play tough on both ends of the floor. Green has the ball. She's looking for options everywhere. Duffy again draws the foul. And with, with Wall sitting because of foul trouble like that, you can see where Bandon perhaps are a bit weakened at the back there. As Duffy will go to shoot two. First shot is not good. Comes off the backboard a bit strong. Misha Duffy with her second, second attempt. And she gets it. Second one is good. Free throws are like that. Some days you can make them, and some days, JP, you couldn't throw the ball in the ocean. <laughs> That's the way it goes. So we've got a one point game here. Quinn to Murphy. Puts on the floor, calls for the travel. St. Joe's have really lifted it on both ends of the floor right now. You can even see it, that you've, they've upped the intensity a good bit. They need to get the ball over the, over the half court. Both inside to Duffy again. Doesn't get it to go, unfortunately. Murphy drives inside. Gives it to McGrath. Pass out to Murphy. A big emphatic block there by Duffy who says no through road. <laughs> As the ball will remain Bandon's possession, 6-15. They lead by a point, 21-20 here in the under-19 C schools final.
He's both got a hand to that, pushed it out of bounds. Nicole Quinn pops inside to Murphy. Murphy on the baseline has options. Outside to Quinn, puts in the floor, pulls up. That's going to be short. They'll be back for a St. Joseph's Community College ball. And looking at the benches here, JP, if the thing foul trouble did come into play, I think perhaps Bandon has a slightly deeper bench, let's say, than St. Joe's have. It looks Creed. like it. Yes. St. Joe's have got themselves into the lead. As Cream pops in the two, McGrath on the ball here. Thinks about a shot, puts it up. Massive three. <laughs> What you couldn't write that script. <laughs> what a way to answer back there. St. Like Joe's first time going into the lead lasted uh, all of four seconds. Bork pushes off. Great rebound inside by Duffy as she picks up the, the foul there. Perhaps perhaps Bork was a little lucky to get away with that, that push off for that shot. As Kate Wall checks back in. They'll be looking to her to shore up the defense in the middle there as St. Joe's have enjoyed a period of dominance. Cutting through the paint. Crane has a shot. And Wall gets the rebound. Turnover for Bandon. The ball is back in the hands of Doherty yet again for St. Joe's. As they look to attack the high post of that zone defense now by took a little hook pass into Burke. Burke passes that lovely out to Crean. That's unfortunate. Duffy with the rebound doesn't get it to go. It remains St. Joseph's ball there. Great pass inside to Crean there. Excellent cut. Great vision by Burke the feeder there. Considering the relative slow start we have, JP, this game is really after picking up. It really has, it really has. St. Joe's took, it took a while to settle in, but now that they have, they're, they're really putting, putting up a great fight to, 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 to Bandon. Doherty looks like she took a little knock there, but I think she's going to carry on. Yeah, she, made, she glanced over, but she wasn't going to look for assistance. St. Joe's ball to inbound here, inside. Cream pulls up, doesn't get it a goal. Great rebound inside by, by Duffy, who picks up the foul. The lack of boxing out, perhaps, from Bandon hurting them a little bit. Wall out of the game now, unfortunately, for Bandon. So Duffy's going to the line now for, uh, for St. Joe's. See if she can give them the lead. Oh, I've been lucky there with the first attempt. Just misses with the second. McGrath gets the rebound. McGrath on the ball. Murphy, thought about a shot, pops it inside. Great cover again by, by Burke in there. Or Duffy, rather. Looks like Kiro Sullivan has come into the game for, uh, for Wall. He has, has to sit out the rest of the game, unfortunately. They rebound again inside there. And the amount of offensive rebounds that St. Joe's are continually getting here, JP, are keeping him in this game. Looks like Danielle Murphy's coming in for, uh, for Bandon. She's coming in for Alison Murphy.
Second shot goes up, goes in. Lovely from Duffy. Let's see if St. Joseph's can hold on to the lead for a little bit longer than they did the last time, Jimmy. Okay, work inside, Green fall for the ball. They just did enough to make sure that the abandoned player was step out of bounds as they regain progression. Doherty across the half court. Well guarded by Bannon kicks outside to Crean, thought about a shot. Puts it on the floor. He's got Duffy the far side, pulls up. Unusual shot technique, doesn't get it to go though. McGraw brings it up. She has been, he goes for the long three. Just misses out. Duffy gets the rebound. Doherty looks to be struggling a bit with her hip. Yeah, as is Duffy here, they're looking for substitutions here. Delaney Donner checks in here for, for Duffy, who looks to be a little bit of back trouble, perhaps. As Nicole Quinn looks to inbound the ball here for Bandon. Almost picked off. McGrath, safe hands as usual. Puts it on the floor, nice move inside, puts it a basket. Oh, unlucky there. Gets her own rebound, though. As Crean is called for the, for the over-the-top foul. Timeout call for St. Joseph's. Score is 24 to 25. St. Joseph's have the lead. Three minutes left on the clock. Ground the ball, baseline pull up, doesn't get it to go. Rebound by Darto Flynn. Gets to the fall, and they're back in the lead here. 26 points, plays 25. Excellent move for the basket by Doherty, just doesn't have enough on it to finish. Rebound by Nicole Quinn on the baseline. Possession arrow stays at Sazer of St. Joe's. Doherty has the ball for St. Joe's. She draws the contact. She will go to the line to shoot two. Mass Scanlon protesting that his player played honest defense there. I would have to agree with him on that one, perhaps. But the referees are never wrong, JP. No, no, no. It's the way the world works. Bit like my wife. <laughs> The second one goes halfway down and back out for Doherty. They trail by a point here. Second one a bit long. Clear rebound inside by Burke. Jump ball, possession in favor of Bandon. So you've less than three minutes left in a, in, a, in, a, in a national final, Jimmy. How important is it to have a coach like Mark Scannell on the bench for you? Absolutely. Like, it just, just even knowing that you have reassurance that if you need a plan or it's not going to plan on the floor, you can look to the sideline and there will be an answer for you. So, Doherty picks up the reach in foul there on McGrath. Murphy checking back into the game here for Bandon. 
That's Murphy for Murphy, I think. Yes, it is. Daniel Murphy gives some good honest minutes there. We could call that a like for like substitution, Jimmy. <laughs> Quinn almost picked off. It was picked off. Burke with the, with the interception here. Down the floor. Murphy followed Burke everywhere she went there. And that'll be uh, two free throws now for every foul as Bandon are in the penalty, I thought. They're in team fouls, yes it is. If St. Joseph's are clever and take it to the basket and draw the fouls, every foul will be a trip to the free throw line. This could really shape the result of the game, really, with free throws being key. Of course, turning a bit short. Second attempt here from Hannah Burke. Ties it up. That's it. That's 26 apiece with two minutes and 10 seconds left on the clock. McGraw has the ball for Bandon. Good defense by Doherty there. Stays with her, avoids the screen from Murphy. All the way in her own is Quinn. Inside, Dada Flynn thought about the shot. Quinn's pass eventually makes it to McGrath. She has the shot. Shot clock violation. Time runs out. It'll be St. Joseph's ball. 1.49 left here. Dare I say we could be looking at overtime given the sparsity of scores in this game, JP. Yeah, well it's, it's going to be a one or two point game at the end, I suspect. Maybe we should go down and decide on free throws. <laughs> Great move inside. You might have the edge of me there, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Foul call here on number 14 for Bandon. That is Kiro Sullivan there. Again, that's a, a tough call to pick up. She was only fighting for the rebound there, but the referee deemed that she had pinned the other player. So. First shot is good for Alicia Duffy. Alicia Duffy is cold as ice there as she drops the two free throws. Draws the foul there. That'll be the third foul on Burke there as a timeout called. We are 26 28 with 123 left in the fourth. Right, one minute, 23 seconds left on the clock. It's a two-point game. St. Joseph's have the lead. They're not used to having the lead. In fairness to them, they've been behind for the whole game. That's it. What they don't want to do now is commit any silly fouls that would give Dan the opportunity to get back from the free throw line. Great basket there from Murphy. Murphy drops the hammer on that shot as they tie the game up. 1-12, 28 apiece here. Inside to Burke. Ball back for Bandon. There's one minute left on the clock. 
And the ground controls the ball as she has been for most of the game here. Doherty picks it up as she crosses half court. McGrath puts on the floor, she's Quinn on the outside. McGrath thought about her shot. Passes it to Murphy. Shot Murphy blocked was blocked there. inside, great re re rebound by Crean there. Crean is foul coming out with it, that will be two free throws for Crean here. And it's been a, quite a frantic fourth quarter, JP, but down the stretch of the game, if you had to pick to an impressive player from each side or a possible MVP, who would have caught your eye? Um, I definitely think uh, Crean, who's gone to the line here, has, has a great energy for uh, for St. Joseph's. And you've, you've got to say McGrath from Bandon has been brilliant. Everything that's gone through them is... As that girl, Crean drops the free throw there, a massive free throw with 42 seconds left. Second one doesn't go, but she has the rebound again. Comes off her hand and out of bounds. She lets the pick up a knock, but will carry on for the 39 seconds that's left. Timeout called by Mark Scannell from Bandon. 28-29 in favour of St. Joe's. So here we go, 39 seconds left in this schools league final between um, Cloche Nakaru and uh, St. Joseph's uh, Mayo. There's one point in it. Murphy has the ball for Bandon. Just misses out. Rebound by Burke, picked off by McGrath. The three for the possible win. Doesn't get it to go. Rebound again by Crean, who's been immense in the last few minutes of this game. Cardi has the ball. She just needs to keep it, get over that line there. As Quinn was forced to foul her there, she'd go to the line and shoot two. Ten point two seconds left. It's still a game that could go either way. Ten seconds, a lot of time in basketball. No timeouts left for Bandon. St. Joe's have one timeout left as Doherty rims out on the first free throw. Second one is good. That's the second one. Two points in it, 10 seconds on the clock. McGrath has the ball. And there is a timeout had been called previous to the, to the ball being inbounded here. St. Joel's will talk it over for the last 10.2. Here we go, JP. McGraw has the ball here. Six seconds. Five, four. The shot is off the mark as St. Joe's Community College from Charleston County Mayo pick up the double with the under-19C league final here after getting the cup in January. 
celebration and still a good game JP yeah it's a great game Jesus close two point game in the end but St. Joseph definitely deserved the win in the end so well, well done to all absolutely we're cutting the audio here now for contractual reasons but please keep watching for the presentation of the MVP in the cup to follow